Let's talk equilibrium conversion. This is something which adds flavor to the reactions. Equilibrium conversion. What is the highest conversion that can be achieved in reversible reactions? Obviously, that's the equilibrium conversion. In terms of reaction temperature and heat exchanged, how equilibrium conversion can be increased for endothermic reactions? Well, obviously, for endothermic reactions, you'll need to supply heat to shift the reaction forward. Therefore, operating at higher temperature is preferred. Thermodynamically, of course. And kinetically, obviously. Okay, how equilibrium conversion can be increased for exothermic reactions. Well, for exothermic reactions, let's write an example. A plus heat. Okay, in order, in order to shift the equilibrium forward, you will need to remove heat. And therefore, it's preferred to operate at lower temperature. There's something preferred thermodynamically but not kinetically obviously okay let's look at the k versus t the equilibrium constant versus t profile for an exothermic reaction so as the temperature increases the value of k decreases that is because for exothermic reaction if we increase the temperature we're simply shifting the equilibrium backward therefore and you know what k is right it's the activities for the product right over the activities of the reactants tamam each you know uh, raised to the stoichiometric number or coefficient sorry okay so you know that we'll have less product if you operate at higher temperature therefore k will be less and therefore the equilibrium conversion will be less because the equilibrium is shifted backward toward the reactants okay again shabab we're talking about equilibrium right shifting the equilibrium okay we're not talking how much conversion you will get no we're saying this is the equilibrium conversion that is what could maximum be achieved طيب. let's talk about adiabatic temperature and adiabatic equilibrium conversion let's see what these terms mean how can we calculate equilibrium conversion for a given reaction taking place in a reactor so how can we calculate xe any idea yep i can hear you saying through the kc expression right and the stoichiometry right okay so through the equilibrium constant and stoichiometry so let's take an example consider the first order liquid phase reaction carried out in a plug flow reactor so let's take this example which we have discussed already in the beginning of the uh, chapter so normal butane is converted to isobutane or a goes to b reversibly where kc is the concentration of B at equilibrium divided by the concentration of E at equilibrium. And then we have the stoichiometry because it's a liquid phase reaction. If you follow the stoichiometry, then you will have this expression. Tamam? Okay, good. Tamam. So, what does that mean? Well, Simply, that means if you substitute for these concentrations using these expressions, and then you solve for x, because here you have Kc as a function of x, because you have x here, and actually this is xe because I'm dealing with equilibrium conversion. 
Okay, then you solve for xe and you get this expression. Okay, please be careful that this expression actually is only suitable for this reaction with these given conditions. Come on. Otherwise, different reactions, different conditions will lead to different Xe equations. So please do not memorize this equation as a general equation. No, it's a special case. Just suitable for this case only. For instance, in this case, we don't have B in the field. So therefore, theta B goes to zero. But other cases, we might have some B in the field. Okay. Tamam. So we have Xe is function of Kc and Kc is function of temperature. But what's the value of temperature inside the reaction? Okay, I need to know what the temperature is in order for me to be able to calculate Kc in order to use it to calculate Xe. And how do I calculate it? How do I calculate T? Well, certainly from the energy balance. So T is obtained from the energy balance on an adiabatic reactor. So this is an algebraic equation for the energy balance and you apply it for an adiabatic reactor because we're concerned now with the case where we have an adiabatic reactor adiabatic operation and then we can solve for t in fact the same equation can be solved for x as well so now we have two equations we have this equation which is x e equals k c as a function of t divided by 1 plus kc as a function of t for this specific case. Tamam. And we have the this equation for x, Tamam, which is coming from the energy balance. So both x's here are function of t. Both of them are function of temperature. Okay, that's good. That's very good. So what can we extract from these two equations? Well, basically, these two equations are telling you that. Tell me what the temperature inside the reactor is, and I'll tell you what the conversion and equilibrium conversion at that specific location are. Okay, so let me plot for you so you would understand what I'm talking about. Okay, so basically, if this is a plug flow reactor and this is V equals to zero, this is V final. Okay, so if you tell me what the temperature in this location is, come on, so let's take that, this location, come on, and please, if you could specify what the temperature here is then we can plug this temperature in this equation and we can calculate what the value of x is and i can also plug it in this equation and calculate for you what x e is okay hope this is clear Type. another question can i find what the maximum achievable conversion in an adiabatic reactor is, can I really find what's the maximum achievable conversion an adiabatic reactor is? In other words, I'm interested to know what is the maximum achievable conversion, which is, which is the equilibrium conversion, right? That I can achieve in an adiabatic reactor, that I can achieve in a reactor that is operated adiabatically. Okay, so let's discuss this. Of course, now, Shabab, I'm not talking about a reactor with a specific volume because I'm talking about the maximum achievable. Okay, if I could make the reactor long enough, okay, what would be the maximum achievable conversion? Okay, so let's look at this equation. Let's look at the energy balance equation. So let's look at this figure. Here I'm plotting x versus t. Okay, and let's start with the x, which is obtained from the energy balance. We said 
usually this term delta cp is very small compared to this term and especially if you have small difference in temperature so the whole term here will be negligible compared to this therefore the energy balance would be almost a linear uh, straight straight line a linear equation linear relationship between x and t okay so as you can see at the beginning of the reactor at the beginning of reactor t equals t naught come on and as i go down the length of the reactor as i go down the length of the reactor because the reaction is exothermic so i'm taking an example here where the reaction is exothermic because the reaction is exothermic releasing heat and this heat is not leaving the reactor this will cause the temperature inside the reactor to increase so as i go down the length of the reactor tamam as i go down the length of the reactor the reaction progresses that means x increases so what else increases temperature increases as well temperature increases as well so i'm going down this path tamam i'm going down this path so this is the energy balance equation however something else is happening as i'm going down the length of the reactor where the temperature is increasing see the temperature is increasing see temperature is increasing as the reaction is progressing meaning as the conversion is increasing what else is happening well if the temperature is increasing then for sure for this exothermic reaction the value of kc is decreasing so in other words for this reversible exothermic reaction the equilibrium is shifted backward the equilibrium is shifted backward that means the equilibrium conversion is going down and this is something you can see from here see uh, the temperature increases um, the equilibrium conversion decreases so let's continue walking down the length of the reactor let's continue do i know where i am in the reactor no i don't know because neither these equations involve v the volume nor they involve the rate of reaction so volume is out of question all what i know is i'm going down the length of the reactor where as the reaction progressing as the reaction progresses the temperature increases and as the temperature increases the equilibrium conversion decreases so let's continue walking down the length of the reactor as i go down the length of the reactor the equilibrium conversion keeps decreasing right and i go more down the length of the reactor and the equilibrium conversion decreases and i go down more until they meet until they meet at this point where where this is the equilibrium conversion this is the maximum achievable conversion because when equilibrium is reached when equilibrium is reached so here tamam so equilibrium met the sorry conversion conversion met the equilibrium conversion so at this point x equals xe now you tell me can the reaction proceed further no it can't because the rate now drops to zero right when equilibrium is reached the rate drops to zero because the forward rate of reaction equals the reverse rate of reaction so that means no rate if there is no rate the reaction will not progress that means x will not increase so that means the temperature will stay the same the equilibrium conversion will stay the same the conversion will stay the same okay so that's maximum conversion i can achieve in this given type of reactor with this given conditions tamam if the reactor was long enough where equilibrium can be achieved okay good so i hope the picture now is clear for you so that means if you solve these two equations simultaneously okay so you can solve these two equations simultaneously this equation and this equation okay and you can solve it simultaneously to find the adiabatic equilibrium temperature and the adiabatic equilibrium conversion so here this temperature we can call it the adiabatic 
equilibrium temperature and this conversion we call it the adiabatic equilibrium conversion okay, so they are these three vertical temperatures that we can calculate without looking at the rate of reaction so it's a business of thermodynamics only because this equation is energy balance coming from thermodynamics and it doesn't involve any rate this equation is coming from thermodynamics as well doesn't involve any rate so i'm only talking thermodynamically so if you solve these two equations simultaneously you can get the adiabatic equilibrium temperature and the adiabatic equilibrium conversion how would you do this well at this point at this point so let's look at this equation here the energy balance equation at this point the conversion is equilibrium conversion right and the temperature is the adiabatic equilibrium temperature the same thing here so that means i can equate these two equations together together and solve for te so how can i solve for and find these values of te and xe well we can either use solver right so we equate these two equations together we say this equation equals this part of the equation this the right hand side of this equation equals the right hand side of this equation okay and then we can use solver or we can solve it graphically as we can see here okay okay so let's take an example and see if we can do this for the elementary solid catalyzed liquid phase reaction a goes to b where pure a is fed to the reactor at a temperature of 300 kelvin that's t naught first make a plot of equilibrium conversion as a function of temperature come on so i want to plot x e as a function of temperature okay and then determine the adiabatic equilibrium temperature and conversion so we want to determine the adiabatic equilibrium temperature and adiabatic equilibrium conversion okay what other general information we have well we have ke which is the equilibrium constant at this temperature what else we have we have the standard delta H formations for a and b we have the cps as well and you can see that cps are the same which means that delta H reaction is not function of temperature and from the delta H formation we can calculate the delta H reaction okay good tamam so here we go delta cp0 delta H reaction is calculated so the reaction is exothermic that means i'm expecting the equilibrium conversion to drop as we increase the temperature okay so let's solve let's find the first requirement xe versus t okay so where do you get the xe from well obviously you get it from the equilibrium constant so okay so let's look at the kc expression the kc expression is written as cb at equilibrium divided by ca at equilibrium let's use the stoichiometry and we use the stoichiometry we substitute ca and c here Tama. And then, of course, we solve for solve for xe after we do this substitution. Solve for xe, and we find this equation. Tamam. Okay. Now we can plot xe as a function of t. However, we don't have kc, so we have k, right? And we don't have an equation. A relationship between kc and temperature but we have a relationship between k and temperature okay so for this case where delta h reaction is constant it's not function of temperature the van hove equation can be written in this form this is the form where delta h reaction is constant okay and then we find the relationship between k and kc through this relationship which is valid for liquid phase reaction we can assume an ideal solution 
So all the gammas are 1, so k gamma is 1. And you know that delta here, the stochastic number is 0 because we have 1 mole gives you 1 mole. So I'll boil down to k equals kc. So now we can write this relationship for kc. Come on. Okay, so there we go. That's now a relationship for kc as a function of temperature. So what do we do? We vary the value of t and calculate the different value, corresponding value of kc and then we calculate the resulting xe. Okay, this is the table that we can establish. t, vary the value of t and then calculate the corresponding kc and then calculate the resulting xe and then we can plot. Tamam? So now we have a plot of xe, xe as a function of t. As you can see, since the reaction is exothermic, as the temperature is increased, the equilibrium conversion decreases because the equilibrium is shifted backward to other reactants. Okay, until you reach above 500 Kelvin, then the equilibrium conversion is zero. While at 300 Kelvin, the yeah, equilibrium conversion is 100%. Okay, now we want to plot x as a function of temperature so that we can find the adiabatic equilibrium temperature and the adiabatic equilibrium conversion okay so we go to the energy balance this is the energy balance you know that q is zero so the shaft work is zero for a packed bed reactor come on we have delta cp is zero in this case okay and you have only one species in the feed so theta i will basically be only theta a which is only one right and then we can divide by f a naught so this guy is only one because we have only for theta a and theta a is one then you can divide by f a naught tamam zero by f a naught is zero okay and then after the simplification we can find this equation see very simple equation for x eb what does eb mean means x from energy balance and you can see it's a straight line equation straight line equation okay so that means we need only two points in order to plot x eb as a function of t so choose any two points of course the first point you will choose is t 300 right because that will give you x zero and then choose another point okay so here i'm showing four points but in fact you need only two points for example this point and this point and then you can on the same plot you can plot this line so this line is coming from the energy balance equation this line is coming from the energy balance equation and where they intersect this is known the adiabatic equilibrium conversion and also corresponds to the adiabatic equilibrium temperature so again this means if the feed consisted of pure A and the feed temperature was 300 Kelvin and the reactor was long enough long enough for equilibrium to be reached then we'll reach this much equilibrium conversion and at that point we have this much temperature okay where it's gonna be i don't know after how much volume i don't know because i don't have information about the rate all what I know is that the reactor is long enough for the or large enough for the equilibrium to be reached. Okay, good. So here is the solution. Here Xe will be 0.42 and Te will be 465 Kelvin. Actually, the number is slightly different if you solve it by yourself at home. Okay, good. So that's how much maximum 
conversion I can get if I operate the reactor adiabatically at the specified conditions and when this conversion is reached the temperature inside the reactor will be 465 Kelvin again what we calculated is known as adiabatic equilibrium conversion and the adiabatic equilibrium temperature they are variables they are thermodynamic variables they are found through thermodynamics only so they are setting the limit so you're saying what we are saying is if I operate the reactor adiabatically with the specified conditions the maximum conversion that can be achieved is 42% and when I reach that that means I have reached the equilibrium conversion the temperature at the exit will be 465 Kelvin so if someone tells you yalla go ahead and run this reactor adiabatically at this specified conditions and kindly get me a conversion of 50 percent what would you say you would say impossible impossible i know that theoretically this is impossible right practically would be impossible as well because thermodynamics sets the limit tamam and thermodynamics is about equilibrium that's why we're talking about equilibrium conversion okay I hope the picture is clear now and we'll meet soon in the second segment of this lecture. Bye for now.